My most popular video since getting back into YouTube is a recommendation of no-code app builders for non-tech founders. This is a too long, dim read version of what I say. For non-tech founders who want to create an app without coding, here's what I would recommend as the safest option. For web, bubble. For mobile, drop it. Everyone was cool and we all lived happily ever after. But then the bubble burst. On May 1st, 2023, Bubble introduced an abrupt change to its pricing method. It's been fairly unpopular. It's a big change and it was implemented atom bomb style. Oh my god. But has it made me change my mind about recommending Bubble to non-tech founders? No, not really. But also, yes, kind of. A look at Bubble's atom bomb. Bubble now charges based on what it calls workload unit. Essentially, how much your app makes their servers work. And every little thing has a price. User taps on the button, workload units. User goes back, more workload units. Problem is, this was never a metric for charging before, so users didn't actually pay attention to it when building their apps. Why would they? Well, now they have to. The new plan catapults many into tier five pricing. That nukes your business model into dust because it now costs more to run your app than you could ever charge your users. On top of that, Bubble doesn't let you export source code. You're locked into the platform. For many users like Jordan Ryan, George Carlin, sums up their situation pretty accurately. You'd be alone, you'd be on your own, you'd be SOL and JWF. Shit out of luck and jolly well fuck. Why am I still kind of okay with Bubble? Existing users are suffering, that sucks. But it's not the point. To a new user who signs up today, it's not a new pricing system. It's just the pricing system. Aside from this, Bubble is still Bubble, a no-code app builder that is class leading in terms of flexibility and customization of web apps. New founders will build apps within the new limitations, people adapt. I predict that apps with subscriptions in the hundreds of dollars will still be okay running on Bubble. The lack of transparency with workload unit calculations is a big issue, but I can't imagine the Bubble team will leave us hanging to explain how it works in time, or they won't, and they'll implode from their own greed wouldn't be the first time. You gotta remember this is a risk that comes with no code. You are kind of at their mercy. You can use alternative no code builders, but they could pull a bubble too. If it means more revenue, why wouldn't they? Why am I not okay with bubble? Because it's possible to balance additional revenue with not screwing over existing users. Bubble knew what the change meant for their customers and they went <laughs> If you're going to implement changes this drastic, I think more transparency would have gone a long way. AKA, how the f do you rack up those ridiculous workload units? Well, in theory, any no-code app builder could do this. Bubble actually did it. And you never realize how exposed you are to vendor lock-in until you realize how small and cramped that black box is. I understand how that makes some never want to go anywhere near Bubble. So if you're one of those, here are three alternatives to Bubble IO that you can use to build robust, complex web apps. First use case, you want to own your code and keep developer options open. For the first use case, we have non-tech founder who wants to go solo for as long as possible and might want to hire a developer later on so they want to keep options open. They have also seen the dangers of being locked in into a platform like Bubble and they're like, F that. Oh God, please no, no! They prioritize function and freedom over user friendliness and quick results and they are prepared to put in the work. For them, I'll recommend Wappler. Wappler is a no-code platform that still allows people with no coding knowledge to build complex workflow like you'd find on Bubble. They have the usual, visual front-end and logic builders, and visual API connected. Here are the key differences. You can access your source code and files anytime, and it's all in HTML and CSS. So if they pull a Bubble, take your project somewhere else. There's no hosting option like on Bubble, so you set up and connect your own external hosting. 
Good thing if you want long-term sustainability. Having a low-code option makes hiring a developer down the road much more feasible. As long as you've done a decent job up to that point, someone like me can take over and start coding on the platform itself. To be fair, I think the learning curve to fully utilize Rappler is steeper than Bubble for a reason. I've always thought Bubble allowed non-tech founders to reach the limit of no-code development. I still do, as long as they can afford to pay for workload units. But I think Webler bridges the gap between no-code and conventional development much better. I recommend going through their tutorial at least once and keeping it open as you navigate your first project. Take a look at their pricing, keeping in mind that this is a bubble alternative. I think it's very reasonably priced. Second use case, WeWeb plus a backend of your choice. For the second use case, we have the non-tech founder that wants to go solo for as long as possible and has no plans to hire a developer. The app doesn't have to be easily portable and can stay no code forever. That saves you the trouble of learning Webler. For your front end, you'll be using WeWeb. WeWeb is a no code front end web app builder that offers most of the functionality of Bubble with a refreshing, modern, and easy to use interface. You can build complex workflows, connect to all the usual third party APIs, and upload your own elements if you want to. WeWeb also lets you export your source code, not as easily as Webler, but it can be done, which is more than we can say for Bubble. Just like Webler, WeWeb doesn't host or provide any native backend. You're supposed to decide which you want to use. The most common stack I've seen is Zano, but really you can use anything. I suggest taking a look at WeWeb's showcase to see the kind of apps that have been built with it, some fairly cool and complex stuff there. Their pricing is pretty comparable to Webler. To me, it's not a deciding factor. With Webler, it's going to be easier to shift the project to custom code if and when the time comes. If you're sure that time is never, WeWeb is an easier front-end builder to master and Webler's learning curve has becomes a bit overkill. Use case number three, if you want a web app with a common specific function. The last use case is a founder that has a specific type of app in mind. Instead of using a generalist no-code app builder, choose a platform that specializes in the kind of app you want to build. If it's a common app type, there will be. And specialized boilerplates are more complete than what WeWeb or Webler will provide. Also, their support team can serve you better since they are specifically trained to deal with your type of questions. One super common example, a marketplace app. You have a few platforms to choose from. I'm just gonna point out one, ShareTribe. They handle technical parts of a marketplace including user management, payment processing, listing management, and legal compliance. They've helped over a thousand marketplaces all over the world set up shop. If you've got a new idea to validate, start with ShareTribe Go, where they've got existing templates that come with common features in the marketplace. As you grow and want to further customize your marketplace, move to ShareTribe Flex, where a developer can add third-party integrations and build custom features for the UI and UX. You'd never get this level of specialized features from the likes of Bubble or Webler. There are other specialty web app builders out there. Say you want an e-commerce app, go with Shopify. Say you want to build an internal tool for businesses, go with Retool or Stacker. I don't think I can cover all the specific use cases in this video, and honestly, I don't want to. Because inevitably, whatever I recommend, 10 people will come along asking me, what about this one? What about that one? I don't believe in giving someone a fish when someone already has it. Check out No Code Tech, a no code tool aggregator that incidentally was acquired by Stacker. They've got a curated database of no code tools that covers tentatively every use case you can think of. At least I've never had a moment where I thought of a use case and no code tech didn't have some suggestions for me. So if you think you have a common use case, check it out. Link is in the description, along with everything else I've recommended in the video. So after looking at all these options, what would I suggest for the average non-tech founder? I'm going to put myself in your shoes for a moment. If I understand you correctly, I'm not sure what I want to build. I have little to no coding knowledge. I want to keep cost low in case I fail. And honestly, I don't know whether I want to hire a developer down the line. I don't even know if this idea will take off. First, 
Understand that the whole point of no code is to keep costs low. The alternative is hiring a developer like this comment here. When you compare it that way, suddenly the priciest no code platforms becomes dirt cheap. And if you are already going to enjoy significant cost savings, do you really need to penny pinch even more? Why not go for the most robust option? It's like when companies outsource their software projects overseas, they're already getting it for dirt cheap. Some directors get blinded by that bottom line and hire the cheapest of the cheap. And even if the project succeeds, I'm just joking, the project always fails. Don't be the director. So with that said, I'll go with Webloop. You'll need to learn how to use the platform before you can really get things going. But once you get things going, you can take it as far as it can go. And because it's in HTML and CSS, once you've taken it as far as you can, you can just tag a developer along. At that point, you already have a profitable idea, so I would argue that speed becomes something worth paying for, since it's now an investment rather than a gamble. Now, I take it when you start development, you will be working on an MVP or minimum viable product. I'd like to introduce you to the concept of minimum lovable product. The difference between the two is that an MLP is not just supposed to work like an MVP is, it's supposed to trigger a positive emotional response from your users. It means more work, but being smart about it. So just a bit more work gets you a lot more love from users. If that sounds good, check out my video covering MLP complete with use cases. If you'd like to get a refresher on MVP first, check out the second video first. I hope you found these recommendations useful. If you did, subscribe, leave a like and comment below. What questions about app development would you like to have answered?